Hi, it's time for another EV blab. Radio Shack have gone bust. Yes, it's finally happened. Today they filed for bankruptcy. And well, it's not surprising. Everyone saw it coming. Everyone knew it was going to happen years ago, even decades ago. A lot of people have been saying this is coming from. And well, to electronics hobbyists like me and no doubt you, Radio Shack have some really fond memories and I'd like to talk about a few just for a minute here because this is how I got my start. They're called Radio Shack in the US of course but they were never called that here. It was always Tandy, Tandy Electronics and this is how I got my start because uh, the nearest electronics store to me when I was a, started out in electronics when I was five or six years old, the nearest store was just around the corner at the local uh, shopping centre, local Tandy store. Couldn't go to the local Dick Smith store, that was much further. Oh, I wasn't old enough to hop on a bus alone and go out there and do it, but I was allowed to go to the local Tandy store, so that's pretty much all I had. That was my electronics world back then, before the internet and the communications revolution and all that. You had your electronics magazines and your local Radio Shack store. That was the electronics hobbyist world back then, and back then I'm talking late 70s uh, to early 80s for me anyway. So this is how I got my start. Look, this is the classic Radio Shack 200 in one. I started with the uh, 50 in one kit, then I got the 150 in one, and then I got, well, the ultimate, the 200 in one kit. And you've seen this on my uh, blog before. That's the original manual for it. Fantastic. And countless electronics hobbyists started their career on these spring terminal uh, 50 in one, 200 in one Tandy Radio Shack kits. And back in the day, of course, you wanted to buy your parts. Well, you went to Tandy and you bought your one chip. Look at this one. It's a, a, a one I dug out of the archives. It's even yellowed. All the plastic is yellow, but they used to have these hanging. This is a voice, a VCP 200 voice recognition IC. <sighs> wonder if it still works. I'm going to have to actually fire it up on a breadboard and see. But you used to get the data sheet in the back and everything was fantastic. And you could famously, of course, buy your two resistors in a pack for a dollar or whatever. Or was it five resistors? I think it was a couple of resistors. Or you bought your one fuse or you bought your one transistor or your one 7400 chip. It was really, you know, I don't know how expensive it was back in the day relative to now. I can't really remember but yeah it wasn't the cheapest thing we take everything for granted these days but and of course no doubt countless people out there went to their local radio shack store picked up a copy of forest mims classic engineer's notebook this is the 1980 edition directly out of my archives i've had um forest mims on the amp hour radio show i'll link that in down below if you haven't seen it fantastic episode he talks about how he uh you know developed all these fantastic engineers mini notebooks. And oh, what else have we got? Of course, when I got my first multimeter, when I was like five or six, can't remember, saved up my pocket money from doing odd jobs, and I went and got this beauty. It's the Micronta, which was a uh, Tandy Radio Shack uh, brand name, a 22201U, I think it's an 18 range analog multimeter that was my first ever multimeter i saved up all my pocket money went down to tandy this is the only one i could afford and well this did me for years it was fantastic so i had my 50 in one kit i had my multimeter had my parts i had my engineer's notebook where i'd build stuff up i had a bought a little breadboard from tandy's everything else that's how you started back in the day, and of course, Tandy did some innovative things. They um, uh, pioneered uh, home computers, of course. Yeah, the Trash 80 Model 1, which I've done a review on. I have to link that down below. The classic uh, Tandy 100 uh, portable computer, even though it wasn't actually designed. It was done by somebody else. But anyway, Tandy drove a lot of that. So that was, you know, a really a pioneering company in computers and hobby electronics back in the day. And now, well... They're gone ski. Ah, well, you know, it, it was inevitable, really. Just like Dick Smith Electronics here in uh, Australia, everyone talks about, oh, it wasn't the same when, uh, you know, Dick Smith sold out. And a lot of people don't realise, yeah, he sold out in like 1982. Oh, I think it was sold out to Woolworths. So, you know, it's a hell of a long time ago, the golden age of 
uh, Radio Shack and uh, places like Dick Smith Electronics here in Australia. Anyway, I just thought I'd announce that and show off a few little things. Radio Shack, they're gone. Uh, it's a different era now, totally different. So yeah, don't be sad. Just look back with fond memories of uh, all of your uh, visiting Radio Shack. If you've got any good, great stories about uh, uh, Radio Shack, if you worked there. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, it was actually my first job. When I was still in high school, I did uh, work experience at the uh, Tandy Repair Center or um, Intertan, as it was called. That was like the incorporated company here in Australia, Intertan Proprietary Limited, and that's where they um, serviced all of the uh, all of the computers and all the uh, products back in the day. And I worked in the uh, computer. Uh, service department working on uh, Model 3s mostly, uh, TRS-80 Model 3s aligning disk drives and doing repairs and stuff like that. That was my first job in high school, that was about 1987, 86, something like that. Anyway, that's pushing my memory, but that technically was my first job. I didn't get paid for it, it was work experience, but yeah, fond memories and of course uh, having the local uh, repair, uh, the mo local uh, Tandy uh, Radio Shack headquarters, like within a bike ride distance, you know, rode everywhere on the bike back then. It was push bike, by the way, not motorbike. Push bike, I'd uh, ride that down there like like a couple of times a week. They would have a place in the back where they would actually um, get all these uh, trial products and things like that that they were trying out or whatever, be it computers, electronics or whatever, and then they go, oh, not suitable or whatever, and they toss them in these junk bins in this back room. So you go into the back room and there's all this cool stuff which, you know, wasn't in the catalogues or anything, and that was just, ah, oh, that was just a gold mine back in the day. It was fantastic. So there you go. Yeah, I got a lot of fond memories of uh, Tandy, as it was called here in Australia. Now they're Gonski. Ah, well, it's a brave new world. Catch you next time. Leave all your comments down below. Tell us all about your stories about Tandy. Beauty. See ya.